Hello and welcome to Channel 2S. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and it's it's been a minute since we've done an episode of Gunpla News. So I'm just going to dive right into the news after, of course, we give a word of thanks to our channel sponsor, New Type HQ. New Type HQ is a US-based Gunpla store where you can buy basically all the kits, paints, or supplies you need for Gunpla. They're pretty great. They've been sponsoring the channel for a couple months now, so go check them out at the link in the description below, and don't forget to use code Channel 2S for 10% off your order. So the first kit of the night is one that I am really excited for, and this is the high grade Universal Sentry Mudrock. Now, there's some good news and some bad news here. The good news is, it's the freaking Mudrock. The bad news is, it's P-Bandai. Yes, this is another one of those brand new mold, completely new P-Bandai kits we've been getting way too many of lately. However, now that Bluefin has been showing a tremendous interest in bringing over more and more P-Bandai kits, I think there's a good chance of us seeing this in the US at the very least. Now design-wise, I think this kit looks absolutely awesome. I've always loved the Mudrock design. It's honestly one of my favorite RX-78 variants, so I'm really happy to see this finally get an official kit. The sculpting looks fantastic. I can't see a single thing on this that's been reused from another kit. And they've actually added some really creative new gimmicks to it too. So you can build this as two different versions of the Mudrock. You can go as the full Mudrock or the Mudrock's in complete form. Beyond that, the kit also has the same rotating forearm gimmick as the Alex 2.0 meaning you can bend the elbows with the arm guard either on the outside or the underside of the arm. This is really helpful for these type of mobile suits that have that style of arm design. And outside of the Master Grade Alex 2.0, I can't think of another kit that does this. That's some really cool new tech they're introducing to the HG line. I already know for sure I'm definitely going to be picking this kit up when it comes out. And the only thing that can make this better is if they paired it up with a re-release of the Gundam Pixie and the Afrit Knock, because I actually want to pick myself up a Gundam Pixie too. That was a pretty cool kit, and unfortunately I did miss it on release. And by the way, that Mudrock is a November 2019 release. So we got a new batch of images to share with you guys of everybody's favorite, Master Grade Barbatos. This is a very popular kit. I'm seeing a lot of buzz about this. Everyone seems to be hyped for this kit, and for good reason too, because it looks pretty freaking amazing. Now, a lot of these are similar images to ones we've seen before. They just have this them on this kind of cool new background that kind of has this IBO feel to it. Now, there's, there's a bunch of cool pictures, but a few of these we've seen before. The one I want to highlight here is one where we can actually see an exploded view of the head and torso frame. This really gives us a good look at the kind of detail we can expect from this kit, and it also looks like they're going to be doing a similar thing to what they did with the Alex 2.0, where some components of the frame will actually have a silver plating on them. They kind of introduced this idea with the double Zeta Verka, and it's really cool to see them continuing it for some of their higher end master grades. It really makes the finished product just look that much better. I've probably said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. I love how the weapons look on this kit. The mace looks awesome, I love the sculpting and detail on it, and the smoothbore rifle looks really, really cool. I've never really been a big fan of this weapon for the Barbatos, but this is the first version of it I've seen that I think looks absolutely awesome. It even folds in half in a way that I actually don't remember it doing in the show. Although it has been a while since I've seen IBO. All right, guys, we gotta unfortunately dip back into the realm of brand new PB and I kits because this is the Hazanthalay 2. Now, I talked a little bit about this last time. Actually, I talked quite a bit about it, but we have some more and higher resolution pictures of it to look at this time. So let's just dive right back in because this kit looks so cool. We really are starting this episode off strong today with just a long string of awesome, awesome looking kits, and this is no exception. I love the design on this, I love the detail. Now, obviously, this is a painted build, but I'm pretty sure a lot of this will be carried over to the finished kit, just judging by how all the pieces fit together. Obviously, little stuff like the fingertips won't be painted, but for the most part, I feel like this is a pretty, pretty amazing looking model. I'm really attracted to the design of this kit. I like the sleek aesthetic, and I really like the transformation. Now, new to this set of images is the reveal, or well, I guess not so much reveal if you're already familiar with this incredibly obscure mobile suit, that the mobile armor mode can actually split into two separate units. At least I assume that's what they're showing here. I can never really tell. It looks like the top half and bottom half split off into two separate flyers, kind of a double Zeta Gundam S Gundam sort of thing going on. Looks really cool. I'm definitely 100% going to be picking up one of these. This is a really awesome looking kit. Definitely going to make my October a lot brighter. All right, so let's talk about that add-on set that they teased for the Hazanthalay 2, the Harutadu 2. Now, in addition to having a very fun name to say, this is also another really awesome looking add-on. Now, they're showing it here with the Wound War, which I'm assuming is kind of the default mobile suit to use this with. It looks pretty great. It does have a separate flyer mode that looks pretty ugly to be honest. It kind of just looks like a bunch of random crap slapped together. But when you put that random crap on a mobile suit, it makes that mobile suit just look so much cooler. It reminds me a lot of the equipment you see on the shoulders of the Gablan Tariru. In fact, it 
probably use the same equipment if anything else in advance of Zeta is something to go off of. It makes the wound wart look a lot cooler. I already kind of like the design, but I think this pretty much seals the deal for me. If I do pick one of these up, I'm definitely going to get a wound wart to go with it. It's a great looking design, and not only will this add-on be compatible with the wound wart, it will also be compatible with the Harutadu. And not only will it be compatible with the Titans Colors Harutadu that we've already seen, but apparently they're going to be releasing a bundle set with a AUG, I guess? Well, I guess the I guess the Advance of Zeta kits aren't really AU colors, but they're doing like a white classic Gundam colors version of the Hazanthale with the Harutadu 2, called the Hazanthale 2 Raw. Now, we don't have any real release info for this, we just have this teaser image to go off of, but it looks like a pretty cool variant. Now, they haven't showed off any kind of Titans Colors version of the Harutadu 2, so I would imagine that this version will probably have a much more coherent color scheme than if you try to take the two separate releases and put them together. So, an episode or two ago, I talked about a mysterious new Perfect Grade Unicorn that looked like it would be our new Perfect Grade for this year, and we have finally seen in full exactly what this looked like. Now, now at the time it seemed kind of weird that they were showing a Bandesine unicorn as a completely gray prototype since it's just made out of parts that we are all already have and know what they look like. But it turns out that they did that because the color scheme of this suit is actually completely new. So this is the Unicorn Gundam Bandesine China Red version. And as the name would imply, it is definitely China Red. This is about the most Chinese color scheme I can imagine on a Gundam. It's got bright red armor. It's got really vibrant, translucent yellow pieces for the Psycho Frame. Now, it is a perfect grade and it is a limited edition kit, so I doubt this is going to be very cheap to pick up, especially considering it is actually exclusive to Bandai China. Or maybe not exactly Bandai China, but Bandai's main distribution website in China. So even if you have a middleman connection in Japan, this is still going to be a pretty tricky figure to pick up. But if you can get a hold of one, it's a pretty awesome display piece. All right, next up, guys, we have another really cool looking P Bandai kit. This is something that I know at least a couple people that I'm personally aware of have been hoping for for a very long time. This is a Reborn 100 Vigna Zera. Now, I am hesitant to say anything about the color scheme of this kit because it looks really good as it does right now, but then again, so did the Vigna Gina 2, and we all know how that thing turned out. I know some people think it's kind of silly to complain about the color scheme of a model kit that you can paint, but it's not even so much that it's a problem when it comes to the Vigna Gina 2. It's more the fact that it was just such an easy problem for Bandai to pick. All they had to do was choose just a slightly different shade of red that wasn't so freaking ugly. Super easy fix for Bandai. They could have done it, and they didn't. It's definitely not something I'm mad over, just disappointed. Come on, Bandai, you're better than that. Back to the Vigna Zero, though, it's a pretty great looking rendition of the design. He does have two different face options, one with the eyes, one with the visor, sort of like you get with the Silver Bullet. And just like with the Silver Bullet, I do much prefer the Jigen style visor on this kit. It just makes it look so much cooler. Design-wise, I don't like this as much as the Vigna Gina 2, but I still think it's a pretty cool variant. And if you want one, you can pick it up in November alongside your Mud Rock. All right, so this is a really simple P Bandai kit, but this is one that I've actually been hoping for for a long time. And this is actually pretty much what I wish the original Gundam H2 Magnum SV was. So this is the H2 Magnum SV, what they're calling the FXplosion version. Now this is exactly what I wish the original kit looked like. It has a great color scheme. I wasn't really a fan of the white and off-white combo they used for the standard model. So this to me looks amazing. I've never been a fan of the kind of semi-translucent pearlescent plastic, but I can easily look past it in this case, since not only does it not look too bad on its own, but it's also gonna look really great with the Trans Am Infinity 00 Sky. The most important part of this variant though, and the reason I love it, is it comes with a display base, so you can display all the funnel bits around him in an awesome effect ring, just like you see in the end of the anime. That was one of the coolest moments in the show for me, which isn't saying a lot given the nature of the show, but that was one of the few times where I was actually really, really excited was watching that fight. So I'm definitely excited to be able to finally recreate one of my few favorite moments from Bill Divers with this kit. So while it is a more simple model that I think a lot of people are gonna overlook, it is one that I myself am very excited for. And I'll definitely be picking one up when it comes out in November. Man, November is going to be an expensive month if you're buying P Bandai. All right, finally, here's something lame and mundane to talk about. So this is another P Bandai kit, and yes, I know we're talking about a lot of P Bandai kits tonight. I'm looking just at like the list of tabs I have open on my browser, and literally every single one of them is P Bandai, except for two that are Gundam base and the Barbatos. So uh, this is definitely an exclusive night of Gunpla. But anyways, back on topic, the high grade Jinx 4 mass production type. This is a kit that we've kind of sort of already gotten the commander version of, but I guess Bandai wanted to just 
squeeze a little bit more of those double O dollars out of their fan base, so they're making a second version of it. Now, I'm honestly not sure what's different about this besides the blue booster bits on the shoulders. I really don't remember what the commander type looks like. I'm assuming it was a different color, or maybe like a gray or something. I'm gonna throw a picture of it probably up on screen here, but I'm not gonna look it up. Either way, this is a kit that I'm not too excited for myself, but given the nature and quantity of Jinx variants that Bandai makes, I'm sure there's a lot of hardcore Jinx collectors out there that are very excited to see this. All right, so right now we're gonna take a little bit of a retrospective look at the Master Grade Gundam F90 because this kit's out now, it's released, it's out in the wild, it looks absolutely incredible, just a beautiful piece of Master Grade engineering that it it just, it hurts to see this lock behind the PB&I wall. So hopefully Bluefin does something about that soon, but in the meantime, I wanna show you something really interesting about this kit. If you built a PB&I kit before, if you've seen a PB&I kit before, you know that they always come in monochrome boxes. Actually, let me see if I can grab one real quick. You're gonna have to move out of the way, Dynamiz. So this is what your typical P-Bandai box looks like. Monochrome box, just a picture of the kit standing here. No real artwork or anything, just something very basic. Doesn't even have anything really printed on the side. Well, this is what the Master Grade F90's box looks like. Yeah. This is a full-on retail Master Grade box. Not only is the box art for this absolutely amazing, but it's also exactly the kind of thing you would expect to see on the store shelves in your local hobby shop. The only time I've ever seen Bandai do this before was with the other Master Grade kits that they gave a US retail release. Avalanche Exia, XN Riser, a stray turn red, and probably something else that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. This is making me suspect that there probably was at some point at least talk about releasing a retail version of this for the States, but apparently that didn't go through. However, there's always still the chance that Bluefin puts it up for sale on their website, so fingers crossed. We'll also be taking a quick look at the first set of mission packs for the F90 because these are out as well now. You can go and get these just like the F90, but I wanna just take a look at the pictures here because there's a couple little things that we didn't quite get to see in the last episode of Gunpla News that I just want to bring up here real quick. So mostly I was curious about those things on his hips because they look kind of interesting. They look like they had some kind of unfolding gimmick. I wasn't really sure what was going on there. Turns out they're just bog standard sub arms. So we can grab a pair of beam sabers, wave them around while he's using his cool crossbone knuckle spikes. And that's basically it. Mystery solved. All right, so I guess we're gonna end off the night with a couple of new Gundam-based Tokyo exclusives. Now, these were revealed at, uh, what was it called? Like C3 AFA Tokyo or something. It's some, it's some big model expo that they were kind of hyping up and I was waiting for it all weekend because I was hoping there'd be some really cool new reveals, but it turns out it was just these two kits. It was honestly a pretty lame expo. Really didn't show anything new off. It's why I delayed this episode of Gunpla News. I was really excited to see what we get and we got Nothing except a couple recolors. So the first of those recolors is the Mobile Doll Sarah Mirror Mission version. This is from that one episode of Build Divers where they see the evil version of Sarah that has black clothes and that's exactly what it is. It's Sarah with a black dress. When you put her into a robot mode, she has the full black faceplate. Looks pretty creepy. That's about all I can say about it. This is gonna be released in the Gundam-based Tokyo store in September. And also in September, you'll be able to pick up the Figurized Standard Ayame gundam base Color and Petite Guy set. So that's a nice little bundle. You know, you get your waifu, you get your little bear. It's a fun little combo set. I don't think that's too bad an idea. Regarding the color scheme of Ayame herself, she's got a teal scarf instead of purple. I'm sure there's a few other color changes as well. That's just what jumps out to me as I'm looking at these pictures. And then the petite guy is in the Gundam base colors and it's that version of the petite guy that comes with an even petiter guy that it can hold, which is just so adorable. I really wanna see a picture of a bear guy holding a petite guy holding that little mini petite guy. I think that would be really fun to see. Well, anyway, guys, I think that's gonna just about do it for tonight. So don't forget to check out our sponsor, New Type HQ, because they really do help out this channel a lot. Use code CHANNEL2S for 10% off. If you enjoyed this video in particular, definitely leave a like on it. If this is the first CHANNEL2S video you've seen, or if you're not subscribed for some other reason, well, what are you doing? Subscribe. I make cool Gundam and Gunpla stuff. It's pretty fun. You're gonna wanna see it. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Second Soundwave. You've been watching Channel 2 and I will see you next time. Take care, guys.